Good evening and welcome. I'm going to be playing a song for you called Here's That Rainy Day, a beautiful ballad written by James Van Heusen and Johnny Burke. And I'm going to talk about jazz reharmonization. I'm going to talk about the original chord progression and then how in the jazz interpretation we reharmonize. And I'm going to be using three basic concepts or rules which are going to break down. First of all, the 5-7 approach to 1 and the approach to the 5-7. And then the second rule, the tritone substitute. And then the third concept, the diminished chord half-step approach. Those three techniques are going to be talking about. So here we go now with Here's That Rainy Day. The first thing I want to talk about is the approach of the 5-7 to 1. Now what that means basically is that any chord can be approached by its related 5-7. So we're in the key of G now, so in other words, obviously the 1 chord can be approached by its 5, which would be D7. So any chord in the system of a tune can be approached by its 5-7. So in this case, this is an unusual tune because it starts out in G major, 
then it goes to B flat major, ends up on E flat major. So now, how do we get the E flat major? Well, in a jazz, from a jazz point of view, we can get there by way of a dominant seventh, which would be the five, the fifth step of its scale. So we're moving to E flat. Fifth step would be B flat, and that'd be dominant. So now we can change that second chord from major seven to B flat seven. Okay, so now the second part of that is we can approach the five chord with its related five. So now we can take this and we're gonna make it a two five one, which is one of the most important progressions in jazz. It's what makes jazz unique in its own uh, sound and style is the two chord now becomes minor and the five is still dominant, and usually alter dominant, so now we'll go with like this. So now the second chord would be minor, which is F minor seven, but we're gonna change it to an F minor six in this case because of the melody note being a D. But we're gonna go with F minor six. Then put the five approach chord there, and we can alter it now by putting, making it augmented like that. So any, any dominant chord, can be usually altered in jazz. So we have G major seven now, F minor six to a B flat, and that's 13 now, flat 13. And there's your E flat major. There's, there's your first progression in the first three measures of the tune. You can see now it goes to the one chord now, two, five, five of E flat that. So we'll take it that far. That's the first thing that happens here. And the rule is the 5-7 approach to any chord and then also the 5-7 approach to the 5. So 5 of 5 and then 5 of 1. Any 1. The 1 can be any chord in the, in the tune. So we'll take it from there. Next thing I want to talk about is the tritone substitute. Now this is just something that substitutes for the five as a rule. And there's variations of this. It can some, sometimes substitute for the two chord. But in this case, in this song, we're gonna like take it this way. We're gonna take G major seven now to the two chord. And then the five is here. Ends up on E flat. Now we can substitute that five chord for its tritone substitute. Now what does that mean? Well, we're going to take tri meaning three. We're going to take three whole steps like this. It's a B flat chord, B flat seven chord, right? So we're going to take three whole steps like this. One, two, three. So it's tritone is three whole steps, but it's also an interval of a augmented fourth or a flat five. This would be a perfect fifth. This would be a flat five. This would be an augmented fourth. So that note, now that note there, we build the chord on, a, a dominant chord, dominant seventh chord, and it substitute for, substitutes for the B flat seven chord. So if we have a B flat seven chord, now we can substitute an E seven chord for it. I'm not gonna go into great detail about this right now. I'm gonna have another video on how the tritone substitute works in detail. But basically I'm gonna say that the E7 now substitutes for the B flat seven like this. And now I have to adapt this E7 chord to the melody, of course. It has to relate to the melody. Now the melody note there is a B flat or like a D, it goes D, we have a D, F, now B flat. So it's right in, now what is the B flat mean to an E7 chord? Well, it's a sharp 11. So now I have to voice the chord like that. So now that one, three, five, seven, sharp nine, I'm sorry, one, three, five, seven, nine, sharp 11. So that sharp 11 is a very distinct jazz chord sound. And the other thing about the tritone substitute, and rather than approaching from a point of view of cyclical movement, like two, five, one. Now we're approaching two, flat two, one, like that. So it creates a chromatic approach, and it's very important to look at the bass line of any song. So the bass line moves from the 
the two chord to the flat two to the one that way. So I'm thinking of E flat as a one, okay? So we always redefine the one. So here's, here's the whole progression. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue to make a chromatic line now in the left hand, which is the bass line. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use another chord there, which is an F sharp augmented, and then put the F minor seven, or F minor six now. And then I'm gonna put the tritone substitute here. And then here's the E flat. So now there you have just the first two measures and all this sort of substitute thing happening. But it's very interesting how it works. So we'll continue now. I want to talk about the bass line and the chromatic approach of a bass line or any kind of a bass line that has to do with stepwise movement. Because bass, bass can move in cycles like this or it can move chromatically or stepwise. Okay, so now in this case, it's gonna be moving down the scale, scale-wise, but then it's gonna do some chromatic movement. So it's gonna go like this. So we know the next, the first chord is G, so, and then we go to an F minor. So now we can approach that chromatically like this. So we wanna put a bass line note between every chord. So in other words, we want, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we want to have a bass note change on every two beats. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, like that. So there's our bass line. And it's very important to understand the bass line and how it's moving because that has everything to do with reharmonization because we start on a G major. And now if we move the bass note down a half step, that changes the chord because that's the melody note. Now it changes it to an F sharp augmented. Now the chord becomes an F minor six with that bass note. Now with this, now with this bass note and that melody, now we have to adjust the chord to become a dominant seventh with a, with a ninth and a sharp 11. We have a major seven, now it moves down to a C minor, and then a B flat bass line. Now, now that's how we approach the two chord. So the A minor seven is the two chord, but everything that happens before that is unusual in a lot of ways, according to the original concept, because it was like one to a fl flat three major seven to a right to a flat six or an. Uh, major seven to a flat two, so it doesn't make any sense. Diatonically, now we're doing this. So you can see that how that makes a lot of sense using that bass line. Right down the scale like that to take us to the A minor. So the scale approach chromatically or stepwise either descending or ascending, this is the descending line, is very important to understand in terms of reharmonization. We end up on a, the 2-5, two 2-5-1, five, two five and I put an augmented fifth in there just to create some interest in the voicing. Now we have a a 2-5-1 into the 4 chord, but it, the, two, the 4 chord is going to be minor now. So we can use a tritone substitute here. Now the 4 chord becomes minor. That's the unique thing about these, this song is that melody goes to, to an E-flat, and that means the 4 chord is automatically a minor chord. So now what I do is this, create that descending motion there to an F-sus chord. Now here, the melody is very interesting because it goes to, like that's a nine of the chord now, sharp nine, and then, and that can be a tritone substitute if we want to approach the 
to the B flat chord now, which is the flat three major seven. Now we're gonna go back to that E flat chord again now, so I use a tritone substitute here. That just means now I'm substituting what would have been a B flat dominant chord now for its flat five, an E, an e chord, which creates a, heart, a flat chromatic approach from one half step above the approach chord ending up on E flat major there now. So right now we go now we're on the two chord. I use that same harmonic progression to a D sus there. Here's the D7 sharp nine then the bass line moves down and descends to the three chord. Now the three chord becomes a substitute for the one because there but we don't want a one we want we want a three six two five that takes us to the midpoint of the song now and then there's a repeat so we'll continue continuing in review we talked about the three basic concepts the five seven approach to one and then the five approach to the five seven and the tritone substitute and the diminished chord half-step approach. Now we're going to look at that. It's going to be the next thing, but now we're, we're at the midpoint, so we're going to just continue with that same progression. Now here, actually, I go up a half-step, which is another way of just dealing with something sitting on one chord. We can often go that, up a half-step or down a half-step. It could go up like that. chord now the four chord is major now here we're going to move descending this is another descending bass line so now here is where an, a, a diminished chord works so now it's a B flat diminished approaching the two chords so like we can approach any chord from its diminished below or above but it functions differently from above than it does below. If it's below, it functions like a five approach, like a dominant seventh. In other words, a, word, a flat seven would approach like an E seven, would function like an E seven with a flat nine approaching the A minor. But now we're approaching from above, which gives us that chromatic bass line. So I'm gonna go, there's the diminished chord there to the five. Now here, another chromatic move in the bass line, and I'll voice it as a C minor six chord. And here's the three chord. And then it's gonna go to uh, actually a six chord, but I'm gonna approach it from a half step below like this. And there's the two chord in dominant. Now here's another chromatic approach. So now, the chromatic approach from above or below. This one is from below. Here's the tritone substitute again. Now you want to download the sheet to this and study it because there's a lot in here. And you want to understand now how that diminished chord works. It can work from below or above. Okay, if you're still with me, I'd like to thank you for hanging on here with me, but I wanted to cover these three rules on this song. It's a little complicated, but the three rules in review are the 5-7 approach to 1 and the 5-7 approach to that 5 chord, so the 2-5-1 approach in jazz, which is so important, and also the tritone substitute, which gives us a lot of harmonic possibilities that we don't have in other other types of music and also the diminished approach chord from a half step above or a half step below those three concepts are, are very important in jazz and I tried to illustrate that in this song here's that rainy day and I will go into more detail but thanks for staying with me and let me know if you learned anything from this or if you appreciate it I really try to respond to all the comments, and thank you so much, and I will see you next time around. Bye-bye.